for assaulting the fortress. Now, is it always better to have them join you? Or are there any cases where like there's a benefit to like just like you know what this guy? I'm just gonna choose to end his life right now. I don't want to deal with this guy anymore. Like, there's a, a huge benefit to them dying, which is you get loot. Oh, so um, and that sounds pretty good to yeah, me. All right, so you've really got that choice. Is what's more valuable to me? This guy's a follower, or this you know epic loot and gear that I'm gonna equip. And what's um, one of the things we've added in relation to the gear? Right. If you kill one of these orcs, they're gonna drop their gear. Oh. Sorry, I won't talk. I always feel bad talking over. Oh no, sure, orcs, same here, yeah. man. Yeah, I'm glad you got that. <laughs> but um, uh, and then that gear will come with a challenge, which is like a, a little gameplay challenge. And right. then if you achieve that challenge, that'll unlock more traits or. Um, oh, like combo so set, that, gauntlet, yeah, body armor, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that makes a new story as well. So if you stealth kill a guy who's good with fire, then maybe he's going to drop a dagger. He was good with fire. That might give you a challenge to burn some guys. You do that. That's going to add fire damage to the dagger if you kill someone who's on fire. And then it unlocks like a little tombstone quote for that orc. So the gear system is actually almost a, a graveyard or a way of immortalizing all of these memorable, cool orcs, unique orcs and enemies that you're going to fight through the game. Wow. So, so like all, the loot that you get, is it just for you? Or is it like, can you actually like, you know, or does that go to like your, your, your troops as well? Like how does that kind of like work? Uh, the loot's for you. Yeah, loot's and for now you. you can visually customize Italian as well. So very cool. And oh man, like I just imagine just all all the voice acting and all the like, there must be just a tremendous amount of number of lines in the game. Right? We have been, um, so the writing team's just done an amazing job, you know, bringing the personality to these guys. And then just the technical side of hooking that up. So right. there's all of the, the memories and the dynamic events and then just the recording. So there's just been recording pretty much solidly for two years. You know, it's just a, and in multiple studios, like it's a colossal amount of content. And, but at the same time, I think they've done just an incredible job keeping the quality of that high as well. Right, from the, from the like writing that I saw during like the presentation, it seemed like it was on point. So like, it'll be great that like, I can just play the game the way I want to play. And I hear all these personalities and all these like, you know, like these quips and going back and forth. And I can like maybe hop into Okadrian's channel, see him play in the game and potentially just see like, you know, completely different conversations yep. or insults or whatever. So and, and even the, the chatter, depending on which tribe, you know, which orc culture is controlling a particular area of Mordor, even the chatter of the grunts and the guys walking around in the oh, world okay. is going to be different and is, is going to reflect They'll react that as based well. on where they are, what you've done, and what's going on. Yep. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. How, how many different, like, like, orc tribes or clans, like, are there? Uh, initially, there's seven. Right. Um, and they change the fort, the wilderness. They have different roles that come with them. They have unique weapons for... Each tribe. <laughs> Dude, too much fun. Over never, ever, ex never gets old. Except, what's that fire? Oh, Stop is this, this going to like, can it like break down? Uh, it can just burn. It doesn't oh, actually get destroyed. Down. Okay, just making sure that's what, so I don't for my place. <laughs> evacuate. If you down. go, the uh, the towers when you're going for the fortress actually can. Oh, Evan's out of there. Oh. Probably a wise move. Yeah. It was oh. And then, um, oh, that's actually... So those are eggs. So right. there's always opportunities to create more chaos in the sandbox as well. So there's spiders, there's ghouls, there's these massive towering um, growls. Do those discriminate like who they attack? Or does it just attack anybody? Will attack you if you free them? Or is that only going to hit like your enemies? If you just open up the cages, they're going to be indiscriminate. They're going to oh. have chaos. But if you see this guy that's coming in now, right. perfect timing, he was mounted on one of the caragors. And we didn't have that last time at all. Right. So we now have the orc cavalry as well and they can even actually steal your mount and take off in that as well oh, how many jerks all right mounts do you have available in the game um we have the three main well so we have the grouts who are the big sort of uh giant creatures we have the drakes we have the caragors but then different regions can actually have variations and different versions of some of those monsters so they'll have different elemental effects or breath weapons or all sorts of chaos well, this guy's actually really putting up a fight. Yeah, that, I mean, he's not mine. But the battle system, like, was just always just so satisfying. You, you always went in there and you felt like a complete badass. You could choose, like, what combo you wanted, how you wanted to finish it off, how you wanted to kind of, like, warp in and out. And, I mean, it was just always just, like, an awesome experience. And it looks like you guys have, like, stayed true to that. Like, any major changes to the battle system? Or have you gotten, like, well, look how, never mind. <laughs> Never this mind. goes Kareem yeah. right off. Oh, nice. Uh, so just here, like, mounted. So he's right. now got the spear when we're mounted as well. So it gives sort of more reach and the, the melee and combat expanded there. You can also do stealth when you're mounted. 
so you can oh, you creep up sneak in? Yeah, and pounce on your enemies. Um, the spear is actually a pretty cool addition to the combat because you can use that when you're in normal melee as well. Because the battles are so much bigger, we've got so many more enemies, so having that ability to kind of clear out uh, is really helpful. And we've added a lot more abilities into the combat tree and the skill right. tree, but we've also added upgrades to every one of those abilities as well so that you can customize it to your own playstyle as well. Be more stealthy, more aggressive, per combo system. Yeah, if you want to, uh, so if you're more skillful and right. don't get hit, you can build up your might bar fast, just as an example, build your might bar faster to do different execution attacks. Um, if you're not as careful and you just want to play more aggressively, you can set that so you're actually going to build up that might bar by actually getting hit. So you can trade off attack versus defense and then and it's just, it's really, it's really deep. And it was very important for us to do that because we want it to keep growing and expanding and evolving over, you know, dozens or even hundreds of hours oh. of gameplay. So speaking of like the hours of gameplay, Ooh. like, Ooh. oh. Womp womp. <laughs> have trouble back and I was, I was looking at Michael there. Now, like, in terms of like the sheer size of the game and content, how would this compare to like, you know, uh, like Shadow of Mordor? Like, like, are they about approximately the same size? I remember like in Shadow of Mordor, you, you had this one huge map, and then you get, you get through that and you're on to like the second huge map, and then it's like, you know, where you kind of like, you know, explore the second half of the game. Like, how would yep. you compare like, you know, Shadow of War compared to the Mordor? So each one of the maps is um, significantly larger than right. those maps. But it's, each one of those maps is also a lot more detailed. So whether it's the architecture, the vegetation, the terrain, um, and we have more of them as right. well, of course. And then the maps actually change according to which overlord is in charge and which tribe is in charge. Right. So the, just the scale of it and the variety of it is... Um, you know, four, five, whatever. Wow, sure. Oh, yeah, and that is, I'm just it's looking for a bigger. sense of like how much like, you know, yeah, like grander it is. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. I like the idea of it being more detailed too, because a lot of times you have games that just have a lot of empty space and you're just spending most of your time navigating and running through it instead of actually utilizing it. So what's he doing right now? Like this looks oh, like so more Oh, so this like is the army screen. So this is the screen where you can go to and right. you can actually see the different enemies and allies. You can study uh, their strengths and their weaknesses. Um, and you can also prepare your squad to assault the fortress or plan your next move, so your spies. You can also see if they're on mission. Some of them have the little bars underneath the icons. Right. So they're actually on mission. They might be hunting down monsters or having a feast or doing an execution. You know, you can have rescue missions for your followers. Do you send them yourself or is that kind of something you do on their own autonomously? It's like, both. You it's can both. Send, them, send them yourself. They can happen autonomously. And then sometimes... One of the, the things that works really well for creating stories as you play is anytime you fail or you die, time's going to move forward and right. evolve. Um, the guy who kills you is going to remember. He's going to level up. But um, also, you know, that, that enables sort of the, the world to evolve around you and you to manipulate it and send them on these missions or follow up these missions. But if you fail, your followers can get captured. Oh, wow. So that can create missions to go and rescue these guys, but then that creates another story because if you don't rescue them and get killed, maybe they're going to betray you and join the other army. Maybe they're going to get pissed off and come back to you. Maybe they'll escape by themselves. Oh, snake. So Shag the Venomous. Oh, wow. All right. She wants to go on some date. So like, let me call, talk about a cool marketing thing you guys have going on here at E3. So like this morning, uh, I was walking from like one hall of E3 to the other. And you go like one week, me and Adrian were talking about this, like you're looking at the banners, we're like, you know, 10 banners in a row for, for Shadow War. Just like different orcs going like, I'll be loyal to you, like, you know, forever. You have my loyalty, I'm with you till the end. And then you walk the other direction on the backs of each of those, like, you betrayed me. Like, I will hunt you down for what you did. And this is like, you know, if you don't like take care of like your, your generals or your, your troops, they will like, they will remember. Like, they yep. each, yeah, that's the key. Nothing will be forgotten. Yeah, oh man. Uh, <laughs> Dude, I'm like really hyped for Shadow of War. I really am. I, like last year, I was just hoping there'd be some kind of announcement, and this year this has it been was him brought. for an hour and a half. Cool. Yeah, if it just like backstage, just like you ever play Shadow. You don't need to tell me about that, Adrian. Come on, man. You're embarrassing. You're embarrassing me, dude. Sorry, man. So, <laughs> I'm excited. Wait. Yeah, no, Sam. So, where can people go to find out more? Um, the interwebs. There you <laughs> go. So Shadow of War, right? Yeah. Yep, yep. 